So far, we've had one blast through the snow and seven lots of gravel to get through. Four to one the opening event, but since then it's been all Citroën. The French team winning all seven on the gravel, giving them a 65-point lead over their rivals. Last time out in Finland, Sebastian Loeb became the only non-Scandinavian driver to win the rally twice. It was a stunning drive and leaves his rivals floundering in his dust. And to add to their misery, we're now in Germany, a place where the Frenchman has never lost since it joined the championship back in 2002. But this rally is a real challenge as the teams prepare their new generation of cars for the first tarmac event of the season. Every day provides slightly different styles of stages and if the weather is bad, then it is an absolute nightmare. This event is the highlight of the year in the German town of Trier and that's where our power stage runs in a few minutes time. And get this everybody, it's the first time a power stage has been run through the streets of a city. We can't wait. Four or five minutes to go to the power stage and I'm very glad to be able to say that in the studio with me this afternoon is David Higgins. David, you're very welcome. It's taken such a long time to get hold of you, I don't know where you've been. We had to put up with that brother of yours all season. I know, tough. <laughs> um, We've got a real surprise on our hands here, but before we deal with what's going on in Germany, I just want to show everybody exactly what you, adrenaline junkie, have been up to in Los Angeles. Here he is. Superb as he comes out of the corner. They've got another lap to go. Smoke oh. pouring off the rear right of Dave Mira's tyre, but Higgins has got the advantage. He's got look at the pressure. Look at the pressure. Oh, look at this. I thought the Mira was going to have a go. There's going to be contact. There's going to be contact here. And oh. Higgins just about gets away with it. This is superb racing. You get all the fun. Where was this, David? That was um, the recent X Games in um, LA a few weeks ago with won the races we had against my teammates, so that was one of those tough things again under orders not to hit each other, but there's only a little bit of contact there. Looks like great fun. No, it's fantastic. They're like the, the rallycross versions of our rally cars. We have like 650 horsepower through the streets with gas 650? Pump. Yeah, the rally car feels pretty slow when you go back. <laughs> You're not supposed to say that. Let's, um, let's talk about Germany, and this is an important one for everybody in the championship because it is the very first tarmac event of the season. So, these teams, Citroen, Ford and Mini, very keen to find out how their cars will go on tarmac. Now, they all, all the cars are looking pretty close, really, and it's great to see Mini right up there and, and challenging as well, but I think on tarmac rides, the mistakes you can make can cost you a lot more, and I think that's what has been the case this weekend, and the, the ones who've made the, the safest and best tyre choices have, have been the ones that are showing up the front now. And Ford really need a big result here, but having looked at how the Mini has been going throughout the weekend, what have you made of it so far? The Mini's been, the chassis has looked fantastic the whole weekend and I think they've, they've really shown real good pace all weekend. The, the Ford has been there as well, but they've just had a few too many mistakes and too many punches and things and obviously the wrong tyre choice at the very start of the event put them on their back foot and it's always hard on a tarmac rally to come from behind and to chase and, and that's what they've had to do and then it leads you to try and take bigger cuts, more risks and things. And the king of Germany since the event began has been this guy Sebastian Lobo, seven times world champion and Citroen love him that much. They said, hey Seb, let's have another couple of years together in what they call a sporting adventure. It's an unbelievable record, isn't it? Yeah, it's it, like... To win three rallies in a row is amazing, but to do it as many times as he's done and to, against some of the best drivers that have ever been in, in the championship, so it's, 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 it's going to take a lot to beat the guy. Uh, this can be a very dangerous rally, we should say, as well. The jeopardy of Germany is enormous, isn't it? Yeah, it's, I think it's, um, the risk is so high that it's, it's difficult to see what's there. You've got the big rocks at the side of the road and everything, and, and tyre choice with the bad weather always makes it a real tough one. Mm. And here are a few examples of what can go wrong if you get it wrong in Germany. It is an unforgiving place, isn't it? Yeah, it's like there's been some of the biggest crashes the WRC has had over recent years and things, and I think a lot of that is down to the, the weather and the, the dangers at the side of the road. Hmm. Let's have a look at then the uh, championship as it stands going in to Germany, and uh, this is the work that has to be done by everybody in the championship, and you'll see there's a bit of work for everybody apart from the Citroen drivers. 27 points is the lead that Sebastian Loeb has over Mika Herven and 31. This is the crucial thing as we reveal to you what's been going on this weekend between Sebastian Loeb and Sebastian II. Uh, that's Ogier. Let's have a look at what went on on uh, day one 
and uh, we expected this fully to be the Sebastian Loeb day. Um, and this was a case of um, Citroen reading the weather properly and Ford not reading the weather properly, wasn't it? Yeah, I think, I think with the difference between the right tyres and the wrong tyres now is not as different as before, but I think low, you always lose less being on the, a safer tyre when it comes to rain than you do by gaining by being on a hard tyre and then hitting the wet with it, and I think that's what happened with Citroen. And many will have been happy because they had Danny Sordo in fourth place, Chris Meek in fifth place. They must have been very happy with the way the Mini was going on its very first day. Yeah, their stage times were right up there the whole, the whole time, so I think they'll be really chuffed to bits to be up there. Uh, on day two, there's a, a little bit of a, a contretemps between the two Citroen drivers. Um, they're told to hold station. Sebastian Loeb is favoured by that. But what happens at the end of the day? Yeah, I think, obviously, um, he, he picked up a punch. I think they were still trying really hard because, although they were under team orders, their, their stage times hadn't dropped compared to the rest of the field. So I think their personal battle maybe was still going pretty strong there. But it looks like we're going to have two more years of this. That's great for the sport, though, and I think it's great that there's somebody up there who can really push Sebastian Moe all the way now. There's a lot of irony in that, isn't there? In that, that you know, there is Sebastian Loeb being told, you will be favoured, we'll keep positions the way you are, you get to the end of the stage, and Sebastian Loeb has dropped a minute in Germany on what was a heck of a puncture. Yeah, and I think... Um, Sebastian Ogier's comment where he said maybe justice has been done on this rally shows what he was thinking, but it's, it's, it's tough to be a manufacturer with two cars up the front. You want them both to come home and be in that position, but the way it's looking now, they're still pretty close up there in a, in a real strong position, so they're still maybe going to get their one and two, but just a different way around to what they were hoping, maybe. So many looking great on Saturday night, but today, day three, has been the Sebastian Ogier cruise and the Danny Sordo hold position. He's looking at a debut, a maiden podium for Mini, which is, so far, looking a great result for them. Yeah, I think they'll be fairly careful on the power stage because they can dine out on a third position for a long time if they can... You know, the debut tarmac rally to be on the podium against the competition of Citroen and Ford, they're going to be absolutely thrilled with that. And here is Danny. He must be overjoyed that uh, on a tarmac rally with everybody looking at him, he's got the podium. Do you think they had a bet between him and Chris Meek? First one to the podium buys dinner. Yeah, I think if I was Chris, I wouldn't be betting on beating <laughs> Danny in Germany, but maybe a gravel rally. He, he knows what he's up to on the black stuff, doesn't he? Um, let's have a look then at our leaderboard as we go into the power stage, a couple of minutes away. And as you can see, it should really be an OGA cruise, shouldn't it? 25 points has got to be on the game, hasn't it? But there's the big news. As you look down, the one to 10, there is no Chris Meek in there. He had a power issue and lost power in his Mini with a couple of kilometers to go in the previous stage, stage 18, and he is out of the rally. It's a tragedy. But let's move on. Here are our Power Stage winners so far this season. Who has triumphed in this last stage? Sebastian Ogier. It all favours him as well. He's got three to Mika Herbin and three who will really want this. But perhaps Sebastian Loeb is going to want this even more. So look, we're off to a place that they call the Circus Maximus. Who's going to be the Russell Crowe this afternoon? Who's going to be the Billy Smart? Let's join Julian Porter and Paul King. We're all set for the grand finale of Rally Deutschland. Before we get to the action, let's have a closer look at the Circus Maximus Trier power stage. And it starts in the shadow of the Porta Nigra, passes through a combination of 90 degree corners before entering the first straight. After another 90 right, the crews will have to tackle a cobbled section. The stage then enters the main straight via a hairpin left, at the end of which is a pair of really tricky chicanes. It's then back past the Porta Nigra and out onto the next lap. A total of three will have to be completed before this incredibly tough Rally Deutschland event is completed for another year. And this is our driver lineup. First into action is the ultimate entertainer, Ken Block. The American is followed by Dutchman Peter Van Merkstein and Matt Wilson. Yari Matti Latvala will hope to fight for his first power stage win after another torrid weekend. Amindo Arojo makes it into the power stage top 12 for the first time. Then Henning Solberg. And what can we expect from Kimi Raikkonen? Peter Solberg has won a power stage already this season. He'll hope to make it too. Hivenen and needs every point he can get. He starts behind Mini's Danny Sordo. Then the top two. No love lost between Sebastian Loeb and Sebastian Ogier so far this weekend. So we are on tarmac for the first time and a very first inner city power stage. They're on for an emphatic one-two finish, but what's been going on at Citroen this weekend? Uh, I don't know, it's big politics this weekend at Citroen and uh, 
I don't know. They, they just seem to be a little bit of infighting and in rivalry. But Ken Block is on the start line. Now, Ken Block, this will suit him down to the ground. He can be a bit of a showman in here. But I tell you what, this isn't as easy as it looks. The first tarmac power stage we have. And they will be pleased that that cobbled street is dry now because that was very wet earlier on. Yeah, you wouldn't believe it now. Clear blue skies above, but we had a torrential downpour just a couple of hours ago. You might still see a few damp patches around in some of the shadier parts, but mostly dry now for Ken Block and co-driver Alex Del Cimino. And well, after the season they've had so far, I think they'll just be delighted to make it this far. Right, he's, it's amazing he's got this far. He's had probably every problem he can have. He's had punctures, he's hit barriers, he's hit grapevines and everything. This is a section which they'd have been fearing if it had been wet, the cobbles. And it's a big curve as well. We're in the streets here, so we've got to watch the curves. They did go over that curve like we thought. So they just, uh, you get that wrong, you take a tyre off the rim here. Again, over the curve, using every single ounce of room they've got. Now, this is the trickiest bit for me. Even though it's just a chicane, those beautifully coloured bannering and advertisings are covering concrete which will take a wheel off or do you radiate they've got to be really careful in there yeah we saw the Hinkelsteins in the uh, the tank testing grounds yesterday this is the uh, power stages of equivalent of a Hinkelstein at those two chicanes but Ken safely through there first time of course it is the first tarmac round of the season these cars set up very differently to what we'll have seen so far in the gravel that's it they're really low they've got big wheels they've got big brakes really low to the ground they might have even because they know it's in the street they might have even tweaked the suspension coming in you notice that ken's front right wheel is brand new he's put a new tire on there because most of the corners but the long corners in this stage are left-handed so he's leaning on that tire a lot you can see how dirty this car is that is from the previous two stages in the vineyard so that has been tricky up there yeah as we said there are some damp patches around we do expect everyone to be on the soft compound tires for this final stage oh, i think they would have taken the soft compound for the previous two stages and they've not got an option now of changing right across the curb and the pavement in there taking every centimetre that they can. Again, he's going to go straight across that one as well. Now, in a road car, you wouldn't even dream of going across the curve, and these lot are just popping it up straight across there. Yeah, just absorbed by the suspension on these uh, new era of world rally cars. Ken in the Ford Fiesta, the monster world rally team driver, of course. It's the uh, fifth time we've seen him this year. As I said, he has had a miserable luck, run of luck in the first four outings of his season so far. Finally, in Germany, he's on course to get to the finish, albeit outside the point-scoring places. Right, currently down in 17th, but he has been as low as 22nd with his problems. Suspension all skew with on Friday after going into the Armco. Anyway, Ken and Alex Gelsomino, they're into their last uh, lap of this uh, three-loop round uh, Trier, the uh, record we have at this power stage. It's been used for a few years now. Francois Duval holds the record. Back in 2007, he did a 3.11.4. Last year, it was actually Kimi Raikkonen who was quickest with a 3.13.9. And as you can see from the clock at the bottom of your screens, Ken Block getting pretty close to those times. We're looking for something around the uh, 3.11, 3.12 marker. They're going to be the point-scoring places that are going to be uh, securing those three, two or one points for the top three. I think Ken's just using his Jim Carner expertise here, <laughs> drifting it beautifully. A little bit of tyre smoke just in that long corner there. <laughs> so close to those concrete. I don't know whether they noticed concrete. Eh? When they wrecked this, I don't know what was out, but they did it in electric cars, not the proper wrecky cars. I'm unsure exactly what was uh, there to uh, mark out the road when they did the wrecky. Yeah, they'll soon find out if they hit one anyway. Ken's about to come through the finish. It's a lot slower than the times we were just talking about. 3.30.5. Anyway, Ken is through. What a relief. It's one of the toughest challenges on the World Rally calendar, the uh, treacherous roads of Rally Deutschland. But Ken has made it through. He'll be pleased with that. And he'll uh, come back for more, I'm sure. I think his next round is going to be in uh, the Rally de France in uh, Strasbourg in about a month's time. Yeah. <laughs>